Hi guys, my name is C.L. Creech. I am the author, uh, creator, publisher of One Last Quest, uh, and I'm here reading it to you. I, hopefully you've been following along the last couple of days. If you're not, haven't I suggest going back and watching the two previous videos, and then we'll go from there. Uh, let's see, where were we? Oh yes, yes. Uh, chapter 2, Catching Up. Now, Michelle was nervous about her meeting with Danny. It had been a long time since she'd seen her old friend, and she wasn't sure the Mike she used to be, and she felt well, she wasn't the Mike he used to know. Uh, over the years, she would think of their group often, but as she changed, she was never sure if they would accept her changes. Uh, she was still trying to become comfortable with who she was and who she was becoming. Uh, and now being confronted with her past made her nervous, even if it was happy memories from her past. Michelle sat on the bench on the back side of the park, uh, just as she promised. She didn't want to be recognized, so she wore a floral sundress with a black, large brim straw hat uh, and dark sunglasses to hide her face. No one was at the park that morning, except for the birds or an occasional squirrel. You're four minutes late. Michelle said matter-of-factly as Danny walked over in his typical classic rock band t-shirt uh, and jeans carrying a paper bag and a cup holder with two coffee cups in it. At least it wasn't five, Danny replied uh, with a smug smile. Danny sat down on the bench next to Michelle. He wasn't sure uh, how close he should sit, so he left enough room to set the bag between them with a bit above for space left over. Uh, as he got situated on the bench, he handed Michelle a cup of coffee. This better be hot, Michelle said with a slight tone of irritation. Is it worth drinking if it isn't? Danny asked, already knowing the answer. They both raised their cups to, the, the, to their lips, sipping on the still hot coffee for a few moments. Neither was sure of what to say to each other. The once best friends had been apart so long and so much had changed that Neither was sure where to begin uh, the conversation. Did you have my bi do you have my biscuit? Michelle asked, finally breaking the silence after a few tense moments. Oh, of course! Danny exclaimed while fumbling with the bag and almost spilling his coffee. Danny pulled out two sausage biscuits wrapped in paper from Marty's, which was a local fast food restaurant. Danny hesitated for a moment, wondering if he should be a gentleman and unwrap Michelle's biscuit before handing it to her. As he was thinking about it, Michelle could see the look of confusion on his face and slowly took the biscuit from his hand. Did you forget something? Michelle asked, looking at Danny, and then the bag. Danny hesitated for a moment before realizing what she was talking about. He reached into the bag and handed her two packets of grape jelly. Thank you, Michelle said politely. As before, they just looked around the park in silence for a few moments. Uh, they would glance at each other for a moment here and there uh, as they sipped their coffee and began to eat their biscuits. So, you ever talk to any of the other members of the group? Michelle asked, once again breaking the silence. I talked to Rick from time to time, Danny said thoughtfully. He hurt his back a few years ago, broke two or three bones, I think. Uh, now he spends all his time running around taking care of his kids. Rick was the oldest of the group. When Michelle last saw him, he uh, had a beautiful young daughter uh, that he would bring to their games. She was always really or very hyperactive, uh, but would break up the tension during stressful moments. Kids, Michelle asked in surprise. The last I saw him, he had just one. The one he used to bring to the games. She must be, what, 15 by now? 17, Danny answered. He has four more. Michelle was in shock. She knew Rick was a family man, but to think he had all those kids just blew her mind. Rick had always been a hard worker and had two or sometimes three jobs. No matter what, though, he always made time for his daughter and for the group. He must be a real wizard. It would take magic powers to keep up with five kids, Michelle said, referencing the type of character Rick had played. They both shared a laugh before Danny continued. Jackie graduated from the police academy with honors. Uh, she works as an undercover cop somewhere upstate now. Uh, Rick said that she has some kind of record for arresting car thieves. Michelle used to lovingly call Jackie the manliest woman I know. She was a tomboy and very tough. 
in some ways, remembering how Je how comfortable Jackie was with herself inspired Michelle to start transitioning and to become comfortable with herself. That figures, Michelle said with a grin. Jackie was the only woman I'd ever seen that was man enough to play a believable orc warrior. I thought she'd end up killing someone one day. I think she has, Danny replied with a grim smile. They both sat quietly for a moment, wondering if or how many people the former warrior may have slain. It wouldn't surprise either if the number was in the dozens at least. What about Kelly? Michelle asked, uh, breaking the silence again. Uh, asked about asking about the final member of the group. Danny stared off for a moment before saying, that, that, that's kind of a long story. Is it because you had something for her? Michelle asked with a smile. What? Uh, no! no uh, Danny became, exclaimed, visibly flustered. No, I, I, I never, I, no, was it that obvious? This was very painful for Danny to think about. He loved everyone in the group. However, he was very much in love with Kelly and had been since the first moment he saw her. Not a day went by that Danny didn't think about Kelly. We dated for a bit, Danny said with a lump in his throat. It ended badly, I take it, Michelle said, putting her hand on Danny's shoulder to try and comfort him. You remember how she played a druid? Danny asked, referencing her character from the game. Michelle nodded, trying to comfort her friend. Well, she was a druid at heart. She got really into the whole nature thing. Uh, she started running around with this group of nature witches, or whatever they called themselves. And she always loved animals, so she adopted a few. Well, a lot. Michelle remembered when they would play in the park as children. Kelly would often chase ducks or raccoons or whatever happened to be frolicking in the park that day. So to hear that she adopted a lot of animals wasn't a surprise. How many? Michelle asked with concern that she may not want to know the answer. Maybe, um, 50, Danny said with a look of shock, or seeing the look of shock on Michelle's face. Or, uh, 60? How in the world? Michelle asked in shock. I think the last I saw her, there was something like 20 dogs, 15 or 20 cats. Uh, there's a bunch of gerbils, snakes, mice. Uh, and, and it'd be up in the hundreds if you count fish. She had a huge pond outside of uh, outside and a fish tank in almost every room. And Michelle was stunned to silence. Even knowing Kelly's love for animals and all things nature, this was an extraordinary amount. The group she was running uh, the group she was running around with, Danny continued, they helped her take care of them all. They were an odd bunch. They'd go in the woods, get naked, and dance around chanting and singing. It was weird, but somehow really nice. It began to dawn on Michelle what may have happened between Danny and Kelly. Danny has always been a great guy, but he never did have a but he did have a reputation for being a bit of a pervert. Let me guess. She wouldn't let you join in? she asked. No, no, they did uh, once or twice, Danny said, shaking his head. And and they said they didn't think I was sincere. They said they thought I was just there to be around uh, a bunch of naked women. You mean, you weren't? Michelle asked sarcastically. No, no, I, I was, Danny said with a shy grin. I, I just had to try to not look at the men. Uh, anyway, Kelly broke up with me, saying that she couldn't be with someone, that she couldn't bring around her group. I tried to tell her that I, I was our group's healer, and I, I was sincerely there to heal my soul. By dancing around naked with Kelly, Michelle asked with a laugh. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> they both shared a good laugh at that exchange. Sharing a laugh made Michelle more comfortable and relaxed. For her, it started seeming like the good old days when life was much simpler. It took her back to a happy place in her mind, which is exactly what she needed right now. So, uh, what are you doing these days? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I did that in the wrong voice. So, what are you doing these days? Michelle asked while slapping Danny's knee with her other hand. Um, I watch a lot of television, smoke a lot of weed, uh, take an odd job here and there to keep my half of the bills paid. Oh, that reminds me, I'm staying with this guy, Tim. I don't like him, but 
he, he gets good weed, uh, otherwise I just, I chill. Michelle could tell that Danny didn't seem happy with his life, but she tried to be positive for him. That doesn't sound too bad. Uh, it's not, Danny said, shaking his head. Danny wanted to ask Michelle about herself, but he was nervous. It was obvious she went through a major change over the years. He didn't know how sensitive a subject it was for her or if she'd even want to talk about it. But he knew he had to try. So, um, what's your story? Uh, when did you, um, start living as a woman? Yeah, that! <laughs> Michelle thought long and hard for a moment before answering. She told her story before, or she hadn't told her story before. No one had ever really asked before. It seemed like forever ago that she left the little town and went to the city. It's a long story, but I'll try to give you the short version, she said, staring off in the distance. Tell me as much as you want, or as much as you're comfortable, or as much as you... Shut up, Danny. Okay. Not long after I quit playing, I moved south to the big city, Michelle said thoughtfully. If you remember, Dad had just died, and I was so tired of everything around here. I just, I needed a fresh start. Thinking back was hard for Michelle. She had to remember the pain of her father's death. She also remembered the need she felt uh, in her heart to run. She had wanted to get as far away from her old life as possible. The only choice she had was to leave and start anew. I remember when that happened, and when you left, Danny said, thinking back. It wasn't easy to do. As soon as I got down there, I got a job bartending at a place called Fishnets. It was pretty nice. I could make $200 a night or more just in tips. And this bar had the most wonderful drag queen shows. The shows were always so bright and colorful. The music was amazing. The queens were so beautiful and confident. They were everything I wanted to be. So I take it you decided to try it? Danny asked, hoping he wasn't just making a random assumption. I wanted to. But I was scared, Michelle said. I replied thoughtfully. My boss, Kurt, the owner, he talked me into it. He overheard me telling one of the waitresses about how much I admired the queens, and he said I should give it a try. It took a while, but I finally built up the confidence, and I did. Did you enjoy it? It was out of this world. The best feeling I ever had in my life it was being on that stage. Over the next couple of years, I got more and more comfortable being this new person, this performer. I loved it so much that I started wearing women's clothes when I wasn't on stage. At first, it was to try on new outfits and new makeup. Sometimes, it was just to get comfortable with a new look. Then one day, on one of my days off, I looked in the mirror and I was in a casual dress with makeup on. It wasn't a drag outfit. It was more like something you'd wear to a brunch or to go shopping. For the first time in my life, I loved the person I saw in the mirror. I felt like this is who I was truly meant to be. Michelle's face lit up thinking about seeing herself in the mirror that day. For the first time in her life, she felt like this was who she was. Uh, this was who she was as a person. Like, she didn't have to hide behind a mask that she'd been wearing her entire life. And you look beautiful, Danny said with a shy smile. This made Michelle blush. Outside of the club, she wasn't sure if anyone had ever called her beautiful before. Thank you, Michelle said as she continued. About two years ago, I got up the courage and started seeing a therapist to help me get started on hormones. I finally felt whole. Like I was on the path to finally love myself. So you've, um, is changed the right word? Danny asked awkwardly. It is, and I haven't completely. Still need the surgeries, but they're expensive and I can't afford them. Most insurance companies won't pay for transgender surgeries. At least mine won't. Some charities will help out, but the wait lists are pretty long. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I wish I could help, Danny said, putting her, his arm around his friend. It's okay, I'm still really nervous about being out in public, Michelle said, leaning into his embrace. Most people aren't accepting of people like me. Uh, when I go into public, I get called a freak and a man. It really hurts. Michelle began to tear up thinking about all the hurtful names she'd been called. 
As good as it felt to finally be yourself, it hurt even more not to be accepted. So sorry, Danny said with genuine concern in his voice. If you're so afraid to go into the public, then what brought you back here? It's the first time I've been back since I left, Michelle said, trying to fight back the tears. I only came back because, because Mom's very sick. So sorry, Danny said, heartbroken. She always made the best cookies for us on game nights. Danny thought back to all the game nights they had together. Michelle's mother was always really supportive of their hobby. She'd constantly bring them cookies or other sweets uh, to snack on as they played. Danny often thought about her triple chocolate chip cookies, which were his personal favorite. <clears throat> yeah, Michelle said as she pulled away and took a tissue out of her purse and began openly cry. She doesn't have long left. and she, she never met the real me. I wanted to let her see who I really am before it was too late. May I ask what happened? Danny asked as he once again put his arm around her shoulder. She... She rejected me. She told me I wasn't her baby boy anymore and that I was some kind of monstrosity. Danny tried his best to hold Michelle, to comfort her. This person didn't sound like the same person who used to bring them cookies. But then again, this was a unique situation. As kind as she seemed all those years ago, it's hard to predict how someone might react to a situation like this. Mike, I, I mean, Michelle, I, 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 I don't know what to say, Danny said while at a loss for words. He didn't mean to call her Mike, but he was caught up in the moment that he didn't see her as Mike or Michelle. He just saw her as his friend. He saw her as a person who was hurting. He saw her as a heart that needed healing. My brother, Michelle said, trying to hold back tears long enough to talk. He decided um, it was best if maybe I just left and went back home. That way we didn't put Mom under any more stress than she needs to be. I wanted to be there with my mother. But he was right. I shouldn't be there if she didn't want me there. It was right after that when I went to get some comfort food to take back to my hotel room and ran into you last night. It breaks my heart, Danny said, trying to find words to comfort her. I don't know what to say or to do for you. Your mom was always so sweet. It's almost unbelievable. But then again, you never know how some people are. It's just so hard. Pretty much have to keep to myself outside of work. Don't have any friends anymore. And now I don't have any family either. Michelle jumped forward off the bench and took a couple of steps forward. She was visibly, visibly in pain, and like with her father's death, she felt a need to run as far away as possible. I'm so sorry. I need to go. Tanny didn't want to let her go. He was the healer, and he wanted to heal her heart. He knew that would take more than a roll of the dice to do it, though. After a moment, it dawned on what he needed to do. Wait! Danny screamed as Michelle walked away. How much longer were you planning to be in town? I was going to stay for a while, Michelle said, pausing and turning back toward Danny. But under the circumstances, I'll probably leave tonight. There's nothing left for me here. Could you stay a couple more days? Danny asked as his idea raced through his head. Not in a hotel room. Come and stay on my couch. It, it would. I would offer you a bed, but well... The mattress needs to be cleaned. <laughs> Danny, I can't, Michelle said, turning away once again. It's not a good idea. Come on, Danny said, persuasively walking up behind her. I know what you're going through is rough. Your blood family may not want you, and parts of society may not either. But I bet I know a group of adventurers that would always stand with their game master. Michelle's heart just melted, wondering if maybe this is what she needed. She wanted to go... Uh, she wanted to go on, to get back to what little of a life she had, and forget the last couple of days ever happened. Then again, maybe seeing or talking to the group would help. Fine, she said reluctantly. A couple of days is fine, but then I have to get back for work. Great, great, Danny exclaimed. Danny wasn't completely sure what he was going to do yet. Um, but he had an idea. He knew he had to get back. He knew he had to bring the adventures of Greythorn back together. No matter what it took, they had to go on an epic quest. 
And this was the most important quest of all. Save their game master and their friend. And we're going to stop there, guys. Uh, thank you all for uh, listening to episode two. I, I hope you're enjoying the adventures of Michelle and Danny. Uh, and soon you're going to get to meet the rest of the group. Uh, tune in tomorrow night or click the next video in the playlist, depending on when you're listening to this, and continue to enjoy the story. Have a wonderful night, you all. <laughs> Bye.